air pollution is one of the major threats to human health. And around 1990, Mexico City had some of the worst air pollution in the world. The benefits of reducing air pollution were therefore substantial. For example, the World Bank in 2002 estimated that a 10% reduction in ozone and PM10 to air pollutants would give health benefits of $882 million for people in Mexico City. So in order to tackle air pollution, Mexico City has implemented over 80 policies in the last two decades. And particulate pollution has decreased by 58% from 1990 to 2019. However, not all policies were a success. In 1989, a policy called Reino Circula was introduced. And this policy has implemented a ban on driving on weekdays based on your number plate. For example, a car with number plate ending on 5 or 6 could not drive on Monday. And the idea is simple. People can drive and emissions will go down. However, research by Lucas Davis, a professor at Berkeley, has shown that this policy had literally no impact on emissions. And the reasons are that people did not switch to public transportation. Instead, they bought additional cars, rearranged to drive on different days, and just used more taxi rides. So the benefits of this policy are zero. In addition, Professor Davis and others estimate that the policy likely had a cost for citizens upwards of $300 million per year. So while a policy of driving restrictions might be politically feasible, from a cost-benefit point of view, this policy makes no sense. And besides continuing every year, this policy was even expanded in 2008 to include Saturdays. But in follow-up work, Professor Davis again showed a zero impact on air pollution. So if driving restrictions are potentially useless and costly, what can you do? Well, alternatives are taxes on gasoline and congestion taxes. But while ideal, these are sometimes politically harder to implement. In addition, you can impose stronger emission standards on cars and fuel. And Mexico City has implemented a variety of the latter with success. However, given the lack of evidence for the usefulness of driving bans and the high costs, this policy likely can be abandoned. In the remainder of the video, I will first discuss evidence that there was no impact on emissions and then discuss why that was the case. Second, I will cover the cost of the policy and then conclude with possible alternatives. First, let's cover the driving restrictions and the lack of impact on air pollution. In 1989, Mexico City imposed driving restriction based on number plates. For example, a number plate ending on five or six could not drive on Monday. Now, there are several advantages of such a policy. First, it is simple to implement and control. Second, there is no cost for the government as the government does not need to borrow money. Third, naive predictions often predict a decrease in air pollution because of the policy. But often, these predictions only allow for limited adaptations by people. However, research by Lucas Davis, an energy economist at Berkeley, in 2008 and 2017 has shown that this policy had no impact on pollution measures. For example, carbon monoxide, an air pollutant, is emitted nearly 100% by cars. So all pollution comes from cars. But on this graph, you can see emission levels of carbon monoxide in levels on the left from 1985 to 2005. On the right, you can see pollution residuals after accounting for weather and other variables. And Professor Davis runs many different specifications and time windows between 1986 and 1993, which shorter time windows generally having this preference as other policies started being introduced as time went on. But all the different specifications point towards the same conclusion. There is very little to no impact of the policy on air pollution. And similar results are obtained for other air pollutants. So why is air pollution not going down? After all, some cars cannot drive and the rules were strictly enforced. Well, the main reasons are the following. First, people did not increase their use of public transport. Second, they bought additional cars. And third, people arranged to drive on different days. And finally, they, they likely used more taxis. Let's discuss these one by one. First, 
people did not use more public transport. This is disappointing as Mexico City has had a great public transportation network in place. For example, on this graph, you can see subway ridership. But after the policy was implemented, subway rides actually went down. And Professor Davis speculates that this occurs because metro stations are often further away and you need to get there by car initially. Second, people bought more secondhand cars so they can avoid the restrictions. But these secondhand cars were often older models that are more polluting. And other research also suggests that people simply adapted the schedule to work around the days they cannot drive so that it would have no impact. And finally, people likely also use taxis because Mexico City had a large taxi fleet, which was easily able to absorb more rides. And the problem is that these taxis were often older and much more polluting than other cars. So the policy had no impact on emissions. But what about the cost for citizens? Well, the cost for citizens are either the burden put on them from purchasing another vehicle, having to get a taxi, or just the cost of longer commutes using other means. And research by Professor Davis and others estimate that the cost to citizens vary between two and $7.5 per vehicle per day, depending on the methodology used. And for 2.3 million cars, that translates to about $240 million to $900 million per year, indicated by the range here. But regardless of the estimate used, with no actual emission reductions, this policy is not justifiable from a cost-benefit perspective. So if driving restrictions are potentially useless, what are other ways to reduce air pollution? I'll give a few alternatives. First, you can impose higher taxes on gasoline. And this directly addresses the root of the problem by incentivizing drivers to drive less. In addition, if the issue is that the government would collect taxes, you could combine this with a lump sum transfer back to citizens. This is the case in Indonesia, for example. Second, you could use congestion taxes. This is more technology intensive, but this was done in London and Singapore. Of note is that this would also raise the cost of using taxis or a secondhand vehicle during rush hour. Third, you can implement stricter emission standards on fuel or cars. And Mexico City has implemented a wide range of these. But whatever policy you use, you want to evaluate based on data and analysis and notice whether your policy is working or not, and then adjust accordingly. And based on this analysis, the driving restriction should likely be abandoned. Also, if you are interested in how much people value the reduction in air pollution and how you can use this information to set energy policy, check out my other video, A Willingness to Pay for Clean Air in China, where I discussed several such exercises.